Welcome back to the channel. Dog Walker Dave here. Today I'm going to be talking about nutrition for training and racing. So stick around. It should be a good one. It's a little bit long though. Before I get going on this topic, I'm here to tell you that although I do have a degree in sports science, kinesiology, etc., I believe the most important experience I have in knowledge comes from 35 years of participating in racing in endurance sports. And what I learned out there in real world conditions, anywhere from minus 20 degrees Celsius to plus 50 degrees Celsius, I believe that is the most important knowledge that I can give you. Why nutrition? Well, for your training in racing, there are several factors that can determine how successful your event or training goes and they are in order number one preparation physical mental preparation for any event is very important number two if you and your preparation have planned for a specific pace now depending on what event you're doing 5k up to an ultra marathon if you are preparing with a specific pace in mind and then you decide to race at a pace that's faster that will definitely derail your race so number one and number two are very important these are controllable factors and the point number three is also a controllable factor point number three is nutrition if you have the first two covered and dialed in there is nothing worse than having your race plans perfectly as they may be executed. If your nutrition goes sideways, your race will, if it hasn't already, it will go completely off the rails. So how do we prepare for this third event or third important point things that you can control you can't control the weather you can't control what other people are doing out on the race all you can control are your preparation your pacing and nutrition so today I'm going to cover what I feel are important things that you might take away from this to help you with your race day nutrition and preparation when you're out there training so today I will cover some of what I have learned through a lot of trial and error, trust me when I say that, through many different types of conditions. So, without further ado, let's get going. Point number one. First part of your nutrition plan should be hydration. We should know that you cannot survive very long without water, unless you're trapped in the Moab desert underneath a rock. But even then, if you are not hydrated well enough, you will not absorb the calories that you get from your food. So, coach, what kind of hydration do you need? Well, you don't, you don't need to, you don't, you don't, you don't need to guzzle one of these things throughout the day. Now, that's a little bit much, but you do need to make sure you are hydrated throughout the day. Roughly, depending, depending on the person, depending on what scientific research you look at, because every time you look, some scientists are saying that you need two liters of water a day, then more on top of that if you exercise. Some are saying you only need a one liter a day or four cups a day. Some are saying that you just go by based on how thirsty you feel. I believe that if you are thirsty, that you might be past that point, so you are underhydrated already or dehydrated already. So let's do a little bit of uh, let's do a little bit of math with this. I'm going to show you a little bit of information based on research. Okay. Now the guideline for training is that I know some people have been told by their coach or friend or professionals that yeah I can go for an hour and a half and I don't have to worry about drinking any water because you know I'm not going to dehydrate myself in an hour and a half that's probably true unless it's extremely hot I personally 
will drink water typically as long as it's not uh, really cold conditions because I can get away with about an hour and a half without having any fluid not the best thing to do what so what I usually do is I, I camel it so I drink a bunch of water beforehand and I can last about an hour and a half but if it's anything warm now depending on you as a person warm might be 15 degrees Celsius and warm might be 30 degrees Celsius but I believe that most times that if you are running for more than 45 minutes you will need to consume plain water and that goes anything up to two hours now as a guideline you're going to be drinking every 15 minutes or so small amounts of water you don't have to guzzle a half a liter in one shot throughout your run just drink frequently throughout your run um, so how do I know how much to actually drink drink a mouthful do I drink 250 mils what's the deal here's what you need to do so what you need to do is you have to strip down all your clothes and if you have a scale weigh yourself so you weigh yourself whatever that weight is in kilogram, kilograms or pounds then go out for a run for an hour but oh sorry I have to add this in make sure you put your running clothes back on everyone so put your running clothes on in whatever conditions so you can test this in lots of different conditions you can test it in minus 10 degrees Celsius or plus 30 degrees Celsius whatever you're going to run in so you go out and run for an hour come back fully dry off take your take your clothes off of course fully dry off with a towel and then get back on the scale so here's where the math comes in to figure out how much you should be consuming per hour of exercise and I'm gonna pause it right here step into a little bit of math nerd science nerd information that's my part-time job full-time job outside of this I'm a math and science teacher here we go with a little math lesson everyone water water has a density of one gram per one milliliter at four degrees Celsius Therefore, 250 grams is equal to 250 milliliters. 250 grams is roughly a half a pound. So if you lose one pound of fluid in one hour of running, that is 454 grams exactly, which is 450 milliliters. So that's approximately one half liter of fluid. Math lesson over for today. Now that the math blah, blah, blah is out of the way, I'm also here to tell you that not only do you need plain water when you're exercising, and plain water will work for typically for people even up to two hours, and for some people even more. So these are just guidelines. These are not, oh, well, coach, you said to do this, and I'm just giving you based on my experience. But I believe you will also need electrolytes throughout your training and racing and anything more than two hours you definitely need electrolytes okay so now that we have the water thing taken care of hopefully let's move on to the food so I believe for anything more than around two hours you will need to consume some type of food some people obviously will can go three hours even four hours and you're pushing it anything more than that but some people can do that because they learn they train their body to consume the fat stores within their body so that's provided you have a low enough heart rate when you're actually out there but for the average person or for most people I should say you have about two hours of energy stores within your liver that you can freely utilize as an energy source when you're out training. So guideline is anything more than two hours, you should be consuming food and starting early and often. Now, before I give some food advice, remember you, you are an experiment of one because what I might do in training and racing or what Killian Jornet or Courtney DeWalter or any of the other professionals in the sport of running or ultra running, what they do might not work for you either. So you, you are an experiment of one. Remember that, please. Because 
if your nutrition goes to pot crap whatever you want to call it as I mentioned earlier you can have the best race plans in the world but if your stomach shuts down that's when your race shuts down there's an old adage an army marches on its stomach that is very true especially when it comes to racing so major point number one regarding food number one variety what do I mean by variety well you have to have a lot of different food sources at your disposal in training and racing because if you have plan a and even plan B for your race so let's just say that you're out doing a race that's four hours long or five hours or some, something like that and you decide ahead of time that hey I've trained with uh, gummies and I've tra trained with gels for my training and that's all I've trained with and water of course and you get about two hours into your event and then your stomach start you start to notice that hey I'm not absorbing those calories like I should I, do, I don't feel right my stomach is off I feel like I'm gonna go to the side of the, of the trail or road and puke you have to go to plan B. So what's your plan B? Well, I'm gonna switch over to whatever type of electrolyte, carbohydrate electrolyte drink. Well, that's fine. What happens if you are three hours into an event and you're out there for a long time and plan A and B don't work? Well, you have to have plan C and D. Now, in order to have plan A, B, C, and D, you can't just experiment during a race. You have to go out and train in specific conditions at specific intensities so if you're out there and you decide just just to go for a hike for four hours and then your run that you're going to do is at a very high intensity for four hours your stomach will and I'm not saying it might it will react a lot differently to going out for a walk because once what happens is, is that your heart rate as your heart rate elevates if you get closer to threshold, your stomach will shut down because what your body is trying to do is divert all of those energy stores to your working muscles instead of your stomach. So the first thing that will shut down is your stomach. So you can consume all the calories that you want. You're putting in two, three, four, five hundred 500 calories an hour, gels, gummies, whatever it is. But if your heart rate is running too high, your stomach will shut down. Now, the good thing is, is that we have our plan A, B, C, and D, and we can train our body to absorb calories. So as a guideline, what I would suggest is to start with around 200 calories per hour. And this is for anything, by the way, this is for anything going more than three hours. Let's just, let's just say three hours. So we're, we're out there, we're training or we're racing for something over three hours. If you know that you're going to be out there that long, start with, with your training and start consuming calories around 45 minutes into your training or race. So you consume calories and shoot for, as your first guideline, is around 200 calories. Now, there are many people out there with different opinions as to, oh, well, if I drink Morton energy drink it's going to work for me because Elliot Kipchoge who is the fastest marathoner on the planet or Killian Jornet who is one of the best ultra marathoners on the planet or whoever else they might say well you should be able to absorb this many calories in an hour but it might not work for you so start with 200 calories an hour 45 minutes into your training or racing and then approximately every 20 to 30 minutes consume calories. So you're taking in small amounts every 20 to 30 minutes. So you're looking at around the equivalent of one gel every half hour. See how that works. Test it in lots of different conditions, not just, oh, I, I'm running in a perfect condition, 15 degrees Celsius, no wind, no hills, perfect nutrition beforehand, well hydrated, all of those perfect conditions. No, try it in really hot conditions, quite cold conditions, rain, snow, gale force winds, lots of different things. So practice your nutrition in all types. And then, not just that, 
all heart rates as well. So go out there, even above race pace for a little bit. So maybe that you're maybe you're concentrating on an event that is four, five, six, ten hours long, but go out there and run for two hours at threshold, which you wouldn't do in uh, a longer race unless you're a professional. But go out there and see what your body can absorb at a very high heart rate. So start with 200 calories, then start to gradually bump up. You can actually train your stomach to handle more calories per hour. You're not gonna sit with seven, 800 calories, but if you can even push towards possibly, possibly 400 calories per hour, that will be very good if you can absorb them. But if you are putting in 400 calories an hour and they're just sitting in your stomach and you're not noticing any gain from it whatsoever, dial that back because your stomach might not be able to handle that. But again, this can be trained, much like every other part of your training program. I will add in one additional caveat to the 200 calories per hour. What I would recommend against, now this might work for you, but this is something that you might want to avoid, is to drink an energy drink, an electrolyte drink, i.e. Gatorade, mixing that with gels or gummies because for me and for a lot of people, it's just too much sugar to try to digest so you have the Gatorade, which contains sugar, and you have the gels or gummies or whatever it is that you're going to eat with that. Don't put the two together because they make people's stomach go sideways a lot. So if you're going to have gels and gummies, stick with plain water and possibly uh, an electrolyte with that, something like a noon, etc. Mix those two together. Usually that's fine for most people, but don't mix Gatorade and gels or gummies. Too much sugar in your stomach and your stomach probably will shut down. Okay, Dog Walker Dave. So we've made it to the three hour point, or even possibly for some people, four or five hours, they can get away with gels, gummies, Gatorade, anything, something like that, something basically a carbohydrate source. What happens if our event is longer? What happens if we're out there all day, or in the case of some ultra marathoners, they're out there for two days. What am I gonna eat? Am I gonna have gels the entire time? A friend of mine years ago did Ironman triathlons and he went entirely on gels and water, entirely. I think he consumed 35 to 40 gels in an Ironman event. I would never recommend that to anybody. That's just, in my opinion, way too much sugar. So what if we get into our longer events, five hours or more, what are we gonna have? Well, on the screen here, I'm going to go over a few different things, possibilities that you could try in your training and hopefully carry over to your racing because once you get past three, four, five hours, depending on the person, you'll want more than just manufactured foods. You might want to put those into the rotation, but you might want to have other things. So what are some other suggestions that you have for me? Well, I'll put them up on the screen here or else. Pause this for a sec and I'll get back to you. Food examples for you to use are gels, energy bars, strope waffles, sandwiches, wraps, peanut butter and jam, ham and cheese, lots of different types of sandwiches you can have. Mashed potato burritos with a little bit of bacon bits thrown in there. Those are good. Pretzels. Chips, candy bars, candy, pizza, bananas, watermelon, or other fruits. Bacon, that is my number one go-to. Boiled potatoes dipped in salt. Baby food pouches, the little ones with the screw top. They are only about 90 or 100 calories, but they sit very well in your stomach as well. Now that we're back, so Dog Walker, you put a bunch of things up on the screen. Am I gonna try them all at once? No, you are not going to try them all at once. I, I personally would not recommend trying them all at once, but try one. Try one in addition to your gels, gummies, or Gatorade. Have a second thing, have a third thing. But what I would do for any event that's long and you're out there 
running for longer periods of time and even in racing I would have as many of those types of foods if not more hey I knew a guy uh, years ago who raced ultra man which is basically the ultra marathon version of a triathlon he would have pork chops during his during his event because that worked for him he loved that combination of protein fat and salt in addition to every other thing that he had so introduce one of those at a time and if I have a I mentioned a ham and cheese sandwich don't eat the whole ham and cheese sandwich at once I would cut it into quarters and maybe have a bit of it every 15 minutes so I have one quarter of a sandwich every 15 minutes and you'd be surprised you're out there and you're having some foods and you might say well I, I planned on eating this sandwich or eating these pretzels or eating whatever it was and your stomach tells you no 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 it's not working for me put those to side and try something else because your stomach can be very fickle out there even even if you trained it to consume whatever amount of calories during the event your stomach will stop your race or put a hold on your race so my next little bit that I'm going to cover now that we know about hydration make sure you get water that is your number one priority for anything for all events for that matter but for anything under two hours typically most people can get away with just plain water then we have our food what are some other things that you might want to recommend well if your stomach goes sideways which if you do these events long enough your stomach will go completely sideways and you'll get out there and what I notice about myself is that during a long training event or a race if I'm starting to get cranky there's a couple of reasons for it the biggest reason I say the number one reason is that my stomach is not absorbing the calories that I need and I'm getting the getting the granglies or whatever I there's a there's a name for it uh, but if my stomach starts to go sideways I'm not getting the calories I need my blood sugar levels starting to lower so I know then that I have to switch gears and I have to try something else now one remedy that I have or it might not it's not a cure-all for sure it's not well if you take this it's gonna help but gravel makes these ginger gummies that you can actually chew so I personally would recommend having a uh, eating one of those and just kind of sticking it in the back of your mouth and having it di having it dis dissolve sorry in the back of your mouth and I would consume one of those every couple hours and I believe that that the ginger in the gravel ginger will definitely help settle your stomach some people will at an aid station in an event they will have uh, ginger ale pop and that helps to uh, helps settle your stomach a bit so that that's number one so you can try something like that to help settle your stomach if the gravel ginger and that's the it's important to, that you get the non drowsy drowsy stuff and I believe the ginger tabs the ginger gravel is non drowsy if that doesn't work out for you what do I do next I want to finish my event what am I gonna do the only thing that you can do at that point if everything that you've tried nutritionally is not working for you and the gravel is not working for you what I would recommend is to do one of two things number one stop and rest for 10 minutes depending on your event if you're out there on a 100k run 10 minutes is not that big of a deal in the big scheme of things it's either it could be the difference between finishing and not finishing an event you could also if you don't want to stop on the side of the road for 10 minutes or side of the trail I would recommend walking so walk for a kilometer two kilometers that will lower your heart rate because you're not running and even if it's flat walk it's fine to walk walk let your stomach settle a bit and then try running again and you'd be very surprised at that working for a lot of people I've done that in different events where my stomach is not it's just not working so I slow down I stop hang out on the side of the trail have a little bit of a pity party see if I can get something down sip some electrolyte drink or have something else to eat 
and your stomach settles down and then get back at it. Now, when you get back at it, I also recommend not just going full throttle after that, thinking, oh, I have to make up for all this lost time. I sat and wasted 10 minutes on the side of the trail. I gotta make up that 10 minutes. Don't go back into full on race pace, what you had planned. Get back in slowly and see how your stomach responds. A lot of times, if you give your stomach time to settle and you give it 10 minutes or 15 minutes or sometimes even half an hour, an hour, depending, depending on the length of the event and the person, it could take a long time for your stomach to settle down. But you'd be surprised that once you start absorbing your calories again, you'll get back into full on race mode. And uh, it will definitely be a tribute to your heart rate lowering you're able to absorb more of those calories. So, to sum up all of this, I know this has been a this has been a long video. To sum up, number one, practice in training what you plan on using in a race. Practice with plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Lots of different plan. Lots of different things that you practice with. If in a race things are not going the way you want to with plan A, B, C, D, whatever it is, ginger tabs, grab all ginger, stop, or walk. Thanks for watching everybody. I know this was a long one, but I believe that nutrition is in many ways more important than your training plan that you've execute it perfectly up to your race time and it's more important than anything else I believe that because I've seen many people in the triathlon world in years past that were extremely fit and they they could do extremely well out there in an event and in a race they go out there raise their heart rate a little bit too high stomach shuts down puking on the side of the road have a DNF and in my 35 years of racing I have never had a DNF now I've had to stop on the side of the road and hang out and let my stomach settle and do the puke and all that kind of stuff but I've never had a DNF in 35 years of racing and that's because I listen to my body and that's what you need to do so you are an experiment of one remember that thanks again for watching you guys if you found this beneficial in any way please feel free to hit that subscribe button have a great rest of your day, everyone. Peace.